Hey, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com. I want to talk to you today about how I use templates in Studio One. Now, I don't use them exactly the way you might expect, uh, but the way I use them, I feel is very practical, and I want to show it to you because it might be something you might want to steal and use in your own session. So when you op- go to the Create New Song page, it gives you a fair amount of options. Now, some of these have to do with what interface you're using. Presonus has made these kind of pre-done Uh, templates for you, I encourage you to check them out. They might be set up in a way that you'd like, but chances are you have a certain way you want your sessions to be. For me, here you can see some of the the templates I've created. Now, the first one I'm going to show you is actually just insanely practical, and it's the one I do for my weekly podcast, Ask Joe, uh, which you can check out at homestudiocorner.com. Go poking around for podcasts, you'll see it. It's a weekly Q&A podcast. So when I go each week to create this podcast, I cre- I open it from that template. And you'll see it's already created with my main vocal track, which has all the processing on it. It's got the channel strip going to a bus with a de and a limiter, which is going to the main output over here, which has another limiter just to catch any, any spare peaks that might come through. I've got my intro and outro music right here. Intro music, here's the transition music for going from one section to the next, and then here is the outro music. It's all there and waiting for me, and even the start and end points are in place waiting for me as well. As you can see, the end point is right at 30 minutes. It's exactly 30 minutes every week. Uh, And so all I have to do, that input's not correct, but I come in, I push that, and I start talking, and we're into the podcast. That saves me tons of time. And then when I'm done, I just check to make sure levels are okay, and I export, and I'm done. I'm literally, of the 30 minutes it takes me to actually record the podcast, I'm spending a few extra minutes to uh, to get things set up. There's just there's not much set up at all. The longest thing it takes me is figuring out the intro for each week where I do something silly musically, uh, where I goof around. But the actual podcast itself takes a little more than 30 minutes to do, and all that is just me actually recording it. So that's one way where, where templates can really save you time for repetitive tasks like that. Now, you may not be a podcaster, but maybe you do the same sort of guitar vocal stuff every time you come you work on a session in your studio. Well, create a template based on that and see if that can save you some time. Here's another way I like to use uh, templates. And this is probably a little more applicable for more people. Here is a song I mix for a client. Now, this is a, a full album project, okay? And so when I first started mixing, I pulled everything into a session, organized everything. I've got them all in folder tracks like I've shown you. And so they're all together. So then my mix window, I've got all the tracks and all my buses are over here where everything runs through. So I did the mix and picked the song that was kind of one of the better songs on the album that was a little more representative of the whole album, okay? And then when I finished this mix and got approval from the client that I was very close to what they wanted, when I started mixing the rest of the songs, I came up here, I hit File, Save as Template, okay? And what this does is it saves everything in your session as a template that you can then find. So let me show you how that works. File, Save as Template, little window comes up and I can change this to S1 vid template with two P's and hit OK and it is saved. Now we can close this session. I don't need to save that. We can come to the start page, create new song and check out our templates. Look, there's the S1 video template we made. We can put uh, notes under there to remind us what it's about. But now we have a template and we can change things like the tempo and the time signature and bars and beats and the sample rate and all that, that's not saved, but this is the template that we are now going to create a new session from. We hit OK, and look what happens. Boom, we essentially have a copy of that original session. Now, this isn't terribly helpful because it has all this audio in it, right? So what I would do at this point is delete those, come up here and under Song, and tell it to remove unused files. And when it asks you if you want to delete them permanently, I say no, because these files are in another song folder. I don't want them to disappear from that song, just from this one. So we say, yes. Now we can save it again as a template. Save as template, use the same name, hit replace existing, which is a super cool, helpful tool. Um, And then we have to come find the template folder. I don't have time for that now. But we would save the template again with the same name, and then it shows up when we open this template every time, it's blank. Now we can import the tracks that the client has sent to us, put them in the right spot, and they already have all this stuff in place. Now, you may not agree with this approach to mixing, but it saves a lot of time. 
if I'm using the same snare drum every time and doing the same treatment, this gets me closer. I still have to mix. I still have to do the actual work of actually mixing the song, uh, but this gives me a head start. A lot like with the podcast, a lot of things I know I would do anyway will be in place and ready to go. So a lot of times on this album project, when I brought in a new song and just pulled the tracks into the session, it already sounded pretty close because the levels were already set and the EQ and compression and stuff was already somewhat in place. So those are two ways that I like to use templates. There's a lot more. I'm sure you can think of three ideas even just now of ways you can use templates in your workflow, but they're they're pretty helpful. I, I balked at templates for a long time, and when I finally embraced them and started using them, I f- I'm finding myself doing it more and more and more. Another <laughs> quick example before I go, I did this for my tracking session. When I was tracking for my latest album, uh, I set up a tracking template. And every new song we recorded, I went boom, new song, and look, all the tracks are here. They're record enabled, ready to go with additional tracks ready for us with the inputs assigned as needed. That was super helpful and made the tracking session go by much quicker than creating new sessions from scratch every time. Okay, that's it for me and templates. See you later. (laughs) 